Aiden Elton High School. This is Mr. Aiden, and this is our first podcast of the year. It's uh, 1.1, molar calculations and molar proportions. So let's get to it. Make sure you're looking for the pineapple in this video, and, uh, and that'll be one of your answers to your five questions. So let's first talk about molar calculations. Yes, that's a mole up in the upper left-hand corner, but we are talking about moles, which is basically just a count of something. And there's a couple different ways to calculate moles. The first way is we take our mass and we divide by our molar mass. Really, really easy calculation. Um, the molar mass never changes. Uh, you can find that on your periodic table, which is pretty easy. Another way, if we're dealing with gases, is to use PIVNERT, PV equals NRT, um, which can be rearranged to be PV over RT, and that equals moles. That R is always going to be 0.0821. Uh, if your pressure is in atmospheres, and your volume is in liters, and your temperature is in Kelvin. Our last way is we take, if we have molarity, which is concentration, and we multiply it by liters, that gives us moles. And a lot of times we use that with the calculation M1V1 equals M2V2. And we'll see that uh, throughout many of our calculations uh, in our moles. And we're always going to use moles in AP chemistry. That's kind of the central unit. And anytime you have a balanced reaction, I want you to see the moles, those big coefficients. If you see that lead ion, that PB plus 2, there's only one of those for every 2 iodine, 2 I minuses. And that's for every 1 PBI2, that precipitate that we have that in that, uh, our first chemical reactions. So if we have 1 and a half moles of lead, then how many moles of iodide are we going to have? We're going to have exactly double because there's a 1 to 2 ratio there. So if we have 1.5, we're going to get 3 moles of iodide. How many PBI2s will we have at the end? We'll just have 1.5 moles. And if you see, because there's a 1 to 1 ratio between the PB plus 2 and the PBI2. So if we have 1.5 at the beginning, we're going to have 1.5 at the end because it's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Let's take a look at another problem here. We have water um, being uh, decomposed by, by electricity into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And let's say they give us grams to start off with, 36 grams of water. Well, we always want to change that in the moles. And just like our calculation, we divide by his molar mass. We divide by 18 grams per mole. 36 divided by 18 is a nice, easy two moles of water. If I have two moles of water, how many H2s do we have? We have two. Why? Because it's a two to two or a one to one ratio. Look at my ratio between water and oxygen gas. It's a two to one ratio. So if I have two moles at the beginning, I'm going to have one mole at the end. What can I do? I can always multiply by our molar mass to get our mass of hydrogen gas. We can multiply our molar mass to get our mass of oxygen gas. And one thing I want you to take a look at is the grams, the mass, is conserved. It's We go from 36 grams, and it breaks down into 4 grams and 32 grams. That's conserved. Mass is always conserved, but moles are not. Take a look at our ratio at the bottom. It's 2 moles equals 2 moles, and then 1 mole. It's not conserved. Moles are just ratios, just ratios. I do want to show you... Um, a way to take a look at our mole, molar proportions, our, our moles as proportions, and it's pretty easy. Anytime we have something like carbon dioxide, if, if I know how much mass I have of carbon dioxide, I can find everything on the inside. I can find this, the grams of, of carbon, and I can find the grams of oxygen, and it's nice and easy. Okay? There are a couple different ways to do these types of problems. The first way to do this problem is we could do it by the train track method. And that might be something you learned last year. Let's say we have 22 grams of carbon dioxide. And let's say we want to find our grams of just carbon. Okay, We're going to do our train tracks here. We divide by our molar mass. That's one of our calculations. There's 44 grams per mole, which gives us moles of carbon dioxide. Then if you think about it, we can take one mole of carbon dioxide. For every one carbon dioxide, we have one mole of carbon. And we know carbon is 12 grams per mole. And it's nice and easy in that if you take a look, our 22 and 44 go down to 1 to 2, doesn't it? And 12 divided by 2 is 6 grams of carbon. 
pretty easy, right? There might be an easier way to do it. Um, let's say we want to find grams of carbon, just like we said, and we know we have 22 grams of carbon dioxide. If we do this proportionally, we know carbon has 12 grams per mole. That's its molar mass. And carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. That's its molar mass. How did we get from 44 to 22? We divide by 2, of course. So if I have started 12 grams per mole, how many grams am I going to have at the end? 6 grams, the exact same amount that I had in the previous way of doing it. There's another way of doing it, and guys, what I want you to see is all of these methods, they're all the same way. Let's say I start with 22 grams of carbon dioxide, just like I started with before. I can multiply by its percentage, and a percentage is part, that's the carbon, that's my carbon there, my part, over my whole, 44 grams per mole, which is my carbon dioxide and you can see I'm taking a percentage here this can be done this can be done as a percentage it can be done as a decimal it can be done as a ratio guys those are all the same things that's part of a whole which is a percentage and so what we have here is 12 times sorry 22 times 12 divided by 44 it's easier just going 22 and 44 reduces the 1 to 2 12 divided by 2 is 6 grams of carbon Guys, these are three different methods for the same exact problem. Three different methods for the same exact problem. And what I want you to see is you can do it any way you want. If you like using proportions better, if you like using percentages or ratios better, if you like using the train tracks better, you do it the way that you feel most comfortable of doing it. Guys, the go to MissRaden.com, go to AP Chemistry, and there's a little homework assignment using Google Docs. There's a little link there. Just go on AP Chemistry. Look for the link for 1.1 molar calculations and proportions, and what do you know? It'll bring it to your homework assignment. you got five questions. All right? Hope you have a good uh, first couple of weeks at school. I can't wait to see you guys and, uh, and teach you guys. Thanks.